Hey guys, this is Garth the Myth Leather Company, and today we're going to show you how to set copper rivets, snaps, double caps, and grommets using only hand tools. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is go over the double caps and the double cap selection and the different tools that you would use to set the double caps. Um, first and foremost is the, the brand of uh, double caps that we use in our shop is Buckle Guy. We've used uh, several different brands and quite honestly these are the best ones that we've found so that's just what we uh, stick with. So the most common ones that we use is the nine millimeter double cap. It's actually 9.2 millimeters and so these are on the top we have a 7.9 millimeter post, a 9.5 millimeter post, and a 12.7 millimeter post and then in different colors in these different rows. So we have antique brass, um, nickel plated, and then this PVD black color, all in those same sizes. So depending on the thickness of your project, it's gonna determine what post you use ultimately for the double cap. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the double caps and the tools required to set the double caps. This is a nine millimeter cap with a 7.9 millimeter post. Now the manufacturer recommends uh, obviously different length posts for the total thickness of your material. Now I know just by experience that this thickness, uh, this is two layers of a vegetable tan leather, that this would be the appropriate length post for this, uh, which happens to be Uh, approximately 3 16th of an inch thick, uh, which they happen to recommend the 7.9 millimeter post. And if you look um, on Buckle Guy's website, they actually will give you the breakdown for whatever ounces or thickness, however you're measuring your thicknesses of leather, and the recommended post, which uh, carries over into the cap diameter. Now there is a way around that if you wanted to use the larger diameter uh, head, uh, but the, the smaller post or longer post or whatever the case may be, uh, by way of a washer or a spacer, and you can make those washer or spacers out of the same material or whatever you need to, to increase the thickness in order to reduce the length of the post. That's just a trick that you can use. As long as the cap isn't visible on the other side, uh, it doesn't really matter. So, um, for this uh, diameter uh, post, the recommended punch size is an eighth of an inch. But I honestly, it, it'll vary for me depending on what material I'm using because the post diameter here and the, the cap diameter is this obviously is slightly larger on the cap versus the post and in your harder veg tans this may be more difficult to set into the material but so I kind of split the difference between the diameters um, but for this one we'll use uh, we'll use a three millimeter uh, punch and this is the uh, these are, just happens to be the brand of punches that we use these are out of Korea and this is called a KS blade punch and we have a set of them over there in the corner you can see with goes from um, one millimeter all the way up to five millimeter so you guys may hear some train noise in the background but honestly if i waited for the train to go by we would be sitting here for the next 10 years making this video so those of you that know us know that we're our, our studio is right by the train track so we're just going to deal with it um so let me, I'm going to punch a hole to both layers of these, of this leather, and then we'll, I'll show you the tools that we use to set them. So in this case, we're going to use this three millimeter punch, drive a hole in through both pieces, and then just quite simply install the cap or the post and then the cap. 
and then the setting tools that we use are uh, also available from Buckle Guy and several other vendors to be honest with you. CS Osborne is one that comes to mind. These are designed to, um, to work in a, in a weighted base such as this one or you can install these in a press if you prefer. Um, we use these in a weighted base for a number of reasons. I pr actually prefer to set all my rivets and hardware by hand. It just gives me a better feel for when the rivet or um, double cap happens to be set perfectly. I can feel it better than, um, than I would with maybe a press. And then the other thing is about a press is that you just don't have the versatility that you would maybe with um, setting them by hand. Um, you may not be able to get into some crazy places. Sometimes we'll set a rivet that's way inside of an article and um, to get around that um, we'll stick a, saw, a small uh, block of granite inside the bag that's wrapped in leather to protect maybe other hardware or something like that and then put on top of that a small um, a small little pound o block to protect our tools from getting dull and then you know we can slide that way in there and punch holes way over here and then also take that off and then put your uh, small base on that and then set your rivet it's just uh makes it a little more versatile for us so speaking of punching surfaces you need to have one of these pound or boards that's what i call them anyway it's just a rubber a rubberized um, plate that you need to put on a, a solid surface this happens to be a piece of granite you don't have to do that um, this does not have to be this big you could also get one uh, small size like this i believe we got this at tandy leather company uh, yes we did this is a matter of fact there's the part number there if you wanted it it's just a little six by six piece of granite with a small poundo board. These are really handy. And then there is the part number for this one. Those are Tandy Leathercraft part numbers. Poundo board, see, I wasn't crazy. Anyway, the base for our setter, our leather with the cap already installed. And then the setter will be screwed on the end of this piece. This is just a, a handheld shaft that's th that has a female thread on one end. And then these are interchangeable ends for the different size double caps. So this one happens to be for the 9.2 millimeter cap. And this is a corresponding for the base. And let's see if I can zoom in there for you. And then you just simply set your double cap on here, put the driver on this end, and then just hammer home. And you can feel it when it when it seats. And there you have it. That one is set. So let's do it one more time. I'm gonna punch the hole. to it okay so next we are going to talk about some copper rivets now this is a little more on the leather craft side of things um, bag makers typically wouldn't uh, use these as much um, but we'll we'll talk about them anyway so uh, this is a number 14 copper rivet and with the corresponding little washer they call these burrs and essentially what happens is this is basically a friction fit so the top of the rivet is tapered 
and then there's a through hole in this burr. And basically by consequence of friction and interference is how we're gonna set this um, rivet into our article here. So we always buy these in three quarter inch lengths no matter what, they're about the same price and then just cut them off to size. It's just a lot easier than stocking several different um, widths to be quite honest with you. So you buy these in three quarter or one inch length and away you go. So for this one, we'll punch this with a two and a half millimeter hole. I'll just punch it in the opposite corner here. And then going forward here, I'm just gonna slide the poundo block out of the way and we're just gonna set the rivet right on the right on the granite. So install it in the grant um, in the hole, put it right on the granite, install your burr. Now there's three tools. Oops, sorry, that are sold as a set. Um to set the tools and uh, to set the rivets rather. And the kind of clever thing is, is that, well, you need different different setters for the different uh, size rivet. And so you can see on the, on the top of here, um, they've uh, punched a number 14. That way you know this set is for uh, the number 14 rivet. And then another clever thing that they did is they actually scribed one, two, and three lines. So this is going to be your first operation, your second operation, and then the third and final operation, which honestly I don't ever use, but I'll show you how to use it. So let's, uh, we're going to set this, uh, set the rivet, and then we'll cut the post off and then finish it up. Tool. We're gonna grab, we're gonna put these to down here so they don't roll away. As you'll notice that these Korean tools actually have a flat space, flat, um, two flat sides. So you put it down on your table, it doesn't roll away. Pretty clever. side this is the number one tool this is pretty polished end and we're just gonna drive that guy down that's flush or maybe sub flush on the back side and that is sub flush on the front side now you need to have a, a large pair of nippers these just are are like um, dikes for cutting wires this spent a lot of years in my in my pockets and on workbenches doing um, from a previous life when I was a welder, so it's in pretty tough shape, but I keep them around. And uh, so we're gonna cut that fairly short and you'll just kind of get a feel for it as you, as you continue to set these, but we'll leave about 3 16ths of an inch left approximately. So we're just gonna cut that off. And that's what you wind up with, just a little bit. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There's about 3 16ths of an inch of post left. Next thing we want to do is we're going to take the number two setter. And basically, all this is is a, is a concave little dome that's pretty polished. And what that's going to do is um, set the rivet down just a little bit on top of the burr, and it's going to round off the, the face of it to kind of dome it off really nicely. So when we start peening this down, we're just, I'm just going to rotate this tool around in a... Um, Kind of a radial motion like this and we'll show you what the outcome of that is. Let's see if I can figure out how to get the camera there to go. 
it. So as you can see there, I really smoothed that, um, the top of that rivet off. Honestly, I think we should have set that or snipped that the uh, post off just a little bit shorter. And I'm gonna try that one more time, just like that, um, just with the post slightly shorter. second one was a lot better that's a nice set so then the number three tool the idea is so now that your burr has been peened down now it's kind of concave shaped so in order to flatten it out the idea was um, was a slightly larger diameter concave shape which is supposed to flatten that washer out and I honestly don't use this one but it is available it does flatten it out. Um, this is not something that we use. Honestly, we don't use copper rivets that much in our work any, anymore. We use them on dog collars and sometimes a, uh, some belting goods, but that's that's about it. We don't put them in handbags. Not, not often anyway. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is install the grommet. Uh, this happens to be a 3 8 grommet. And we also get these from uh, Buckle Guy and the punch that we'll use for this diameter is actually 10 millimeter. We use a 10 millimeter punch to punch a through hole. And then we use some setting tools that are available from CS Osborne. And ironically, these will fit in almost, I think most standard presses, although I don't know because we don't have one, but it definitely fits in my weighted base. So we have a, a tool that fits in the weighted base and then we have a corresponding tool that will fit. <laughs> and then we have a corresponding tool that will fit into our threaded post. Here's a 10 millimeter punch that I use. Same company. And for this one, I think we'll, we're gonna just drive it through a couple thinner pieces of leather. I think this might be a little bit too thick for these grommets, but we can try, but I know it'll work in this, so let's just use this. This is like three to four ounce veg tan, so let's, install it in this. So the post side, we always put to the outside because that would be the nicest looking side. And then on this piece, if you look, there is a convexed side and a concave side. What you want to do to set these is put the side that you're going to put to the outside of your project down on the on your base or on your post and what happens is is when you set this there's a little pin that locates the uh, the inside diameter of your grommet and that'll go down when you go to set it so um, basically what that looks like is there's a little pin on this side and so when you set this that will kind of correspond together like that this is spring loaded so pretty clever and works out really good so put your grommet from the, out, from the outside down then you're going to lay this piece concave side up and then you're going to take your basically your peening tool put it on the on the pin until it 
kind of sinks down and then just drive it drive it home and there you go it's rolled that over perfectly like i said this is cs osborne makes these tools this is the 3 8 size so this could be installed, this could be set obviously by hand or in a press too. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is snaps. Now these snaps happen to be a THK brand that we buy from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. This is a Japanese snap and it's the smoothest snap that we've ever used. And we use, uh, we've tried a couple other different brands and nothing compares so if you have an opportunity to try these i highly suggest that you do we also set these by hand and consequently guess what they fit in that weighted base and that standard threaded post so nothing crazy you can just buy the uh, corresponding tools for these uh, snaps from the vendor that you buy them from so we're going to show you how to install them now This one is going to use a couple washers to simulate what you may want to do in the real world here. This is one of the smoothest action snaps that uh, we've ever used. A lot of the other ones that are on the market, once you set them, that they, the geometry gets all messed up and they're sometimes really hard to get apart. These are just really silky smooth. I really highly recommend this. And this, this again is the THK brand. This is a Japanese snap. And that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. I appreciate you hanging around. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other videos as well. If you have any comments or any other videos you'd like to see, please post them in the comment box below. Thank you.